warriors, uh, decolonization warriors, do a quick bio of who you are. Chuck Pinto Candelaria, Ramsey Maloney, activist, uh, vice chairman of Sacred Sites Protection Rights of Indigenous Tribes, uh, uh, defender of Sacred Sites, uh, father of five, and uh, community member of the Bay Area. Uh, I am the three F's, okay? Fellow, check this out. La, La Mesha, she is old school right here. The three, the three F's stand for Feo Fuerte y Formal. And let me tell you, if you don't know what that means, that's what it means to be handsome. That's ugly, ugly, strong, and formal. With Barry, with Barry. My name is Benjamin Boxiera. I'm a professor, I'm an author. I do work in the community. I love you all. Well, hey, y'all. Didn't expect to be speaking tonight, but um, I'm uh, Jeremy Miller, and uh, grew up out here, community member, uh, program director for the Idris Stelly Foundation, uh, do some people's journalism every now and then for uh, Poor Magazine and the SF Bayview uh, National Black Newspaper, and uh, I'm also... Uh, Involved in radio, uh, mainly here because I love I love homefulness and poor magazine, and I love the people. Uh, you know, I, I I'm a firm believer. The land belongs to the people who belong to the land. It's reflexive, and that's not the motherfuckers that are up in here trying to take over. That's right. Oh, oh. Um, so let me do a really quick three. Did you have a question, Uncle Leroy? Can we get a woman on here? Yes, yeah, that's why I was trying to get Misha, but she, de she de de denied her like moment and said that she wanted Jeremy on. Any other women who want to be on this panel, Funky Fresh and, and uh, Fast, on uh, the question of colonization? Kim? No. <laughs> well, know that other women are welcome, and thank you for calling that out, but we got to defirm it here. Okay, so. Just for people to understand, tonight is in fact the anti-gentrification book tour in honor, of course, of the release of Cool Don't Live Here More More by none other than Tony Robles from Magazine, right? But that said, Poor Magazine, Prensa Pobre, we've been doing the anti-gentrification book tours. We've been doing the gentrification tours on us for a minute because we as displaced, removed people are personally impacted. We are the ones, we are the clients, we are the serviced, we are the ones who maybe get a referral into poverty pimped housing, and if we're lucky, we're not ending up in the cardboard motels like me and my mama did many, many, many moons, I say. Mama house in the house too with uh, Mama Lori, <laughs> and all of us, right? So, the reality is we've already been gentrificated before. And it's very important for us as revolutionaries to be connecting those dots. To be not starting right here in 2015, fighting the poverty pimps and the developers and the uh, land stealers and acting like this just happened, right? Because this done been happening. But most importantly, it happened several hundred years ago, or thousands of years ago with the first peoples. Uh, Ohlone, Ashe, peoples of this land upon who we're standing, right? So tonight, within the concept of moving this along and doing it funky, fresh, and fast, because we do, we are artists as well, we want to answer this one question through our powerful panel here. Is this high-speed violence of gentrification of these 21st century gentry tech nation and so many more politricsters who want to remove us and throw us out, is that really just the new colonial removal project. Uh, of course, uh, I can see this on multiple levels, what's, uh, especially uh, the erasure of the culture that has been created in most of these uh, communities that are being gentrified. If you look at like Highland Park, the Mission, Fruitvale, uh, what the United States government actually did it was put all of these different ethnicities all together in the neighborhood. Uh, they fed them drugs, they fed them poverty, uh, they gave them guns, right? And they enforced it on all of these communities and said, try to survive. 
right? Expecting them to kill each other and to die and have this culture of death. But what happened was the resilience of those people who were connected to their cultures, bringing it to their communities here, re-envisioned a new American dream, right? And so they were able to create culture of life within these communities that you see in the mission, that you see in Fruitvale, that you see over there in Highland Park, in Los Angeles area, and other communities that this is taking place. So what happened was that, that the people themselves were able to create a culture of life. Now what's going on is seeing that that survival is taking place, they want to come in and they want to usurp that culture back for themselves. So we have zombies that are coming and taking that place. Not only are they taking the workforce away from mankind and they're trying to put it into technological forms, right? So that's another way of erasing humanity, is replacing the workforce with computers, which is definitely going on today here in the Silicon Valley. So, you know, uh, these are kind of just kind of different levels that I'm trying to throw it out there in which, you know, it is a new genocide. It's not a new genocide. It's the same old genocide being recycled and revisioned by them to continue to kill off people of color that are no longer useful for them in their workforce to continue to be the people that they, they exist off so, enough That's because right. it's near bark, all right. Thank okay? you. And so, what happened is, people. is that I remember being around this neighborhood as a little kid, and we used to celebrate birthdays around here. As the homeboy just said right here, we had resilience, we had love. The beauty of being from San Francisco was you learned a certain uh, hustle out here. And so they try to say that we were segregated. And yes, growing up on uh, in the projects, we were somewhat segre segregated. However, we still ventured off to different places and expanded our minds in, with different realities. Going out to the beach, going out downtown, going out to Daly City, etc. And note here, unfortunately, in the places where we're being lo relocated right now, we don't have that type of, those types of resources, and unfortunately, the type of kind of hustle that comes with being from a metropolitan area. So we're gonna end up losing that type of hustle. I hope that doesn't happen, but unfortunately, uh, uh, not being connected to the place where there's power, where there's economic wealth, where we can fuck, where we can imagine some type of economic mobility, it's gonna end up happening. It already is happening, right? Something else that is happening here is this racism. And it's a very undercover type of racism that is protected by political correctness. Political correctness, they don't call us spicks or wetbacks anymore to our face, all right? Nevertheless, they feel it in their hearts, and when they see us, they're afraid and they panic, just like they panicked when they killed my good friend, Alex Nieto. Many of you know about that case, right? He was shot at 59 times by the San Francisco Police Department. But the reason why he was killed was gentrification. What happened was, is you had someone, two people who did not know that that place, Bernal Heights, is the, was the straight up barrio. That was, that was like the bulldogs. Nobody wanted to live around there, yet you created your own community. It was a beautiful place, right? However, in the 90s and in the year 2000s, uh, what happened was is they started kicking all of the people of color out of there. Alex Nieto was one of the last of the Mohicans up on Bernal Heights. He had been there his entire life, 28 years. He goes up to the park to eat. Two people walking their dogs. Only one of them sees this. They say this, and this is according to the reports. They say they see him resting his hand on what they think is a gun. Alex Neto hasn't even looked at them. Alex Neto has done, he has done nothing violent or anything to these people. This person then says, you know what? This, this guy must be dangerous. He's Latino, a big guy with the red jacket. I'm not making this shit up, man. They, they call, he called the police 
and made that description. A Latino with a red jacket has a gun. Even though it wasn't a gun, it was his work issue taser. He was scheduled for work in less than two hours. He was killed because of gentrification. We cannot allow ourselves to be killed, to be victims in that manner. That's it. Short answer to the question, no. No, it is not new. What is new, uh, as, as Luta and Benjamin pointed out, is that it, and as well as Tiny has pointed out, is the, the rapid expansion. But something that we need to be very clear about, to the powers that be, our people, our population, has always been considered expendable. And that's old news. There was never a position carved out in this economy for us. We carved it out. We built it. And there's been a shift. There's been a shift in this country in particular, and this, and really,